Hi right, guys. It is a gorgeous, over the top, beautiful day here in the end times. I am in the uh, little dog and I are in the paradise of Portland, Maine today on this gorgeous, I think it's like high of 74 degree, beautiful late July day. I think it's Monday morning, somewhere around July 25th or 26th, I don't know. Somewhere in there, I notice uh, we have the book here I need to spend some time on. The Book of Signs, 31 Undeniable Prophecies of the Apocalypse. Yes, so uh, I guess these are probably biblical prophecies. I'm using the Holy Bible as a tripod today. So uh, I'm going to try to do some reading in our definitive guide to uh, the 31 undeniable prophecies of the apocalypse. But before we dive into the Holy Bible, let's just dive into the mainstream media here for some undeniable prophecies of the apocalypse. A couple of versions of the story. Uh, since I'm feeling biblical on Monday morning, we're going to go over to the Middle East this morning. You know, all the attention has been on Germany and China flooding and, <coughs> well, my own house getting ready to flood. But we're going to look at the flip side of flooding. Over there in the Middle East, and there's two of them. I'll just read the beginning of uh, this story from the Telegraph, and then we're going to go over to the Independent. We're going to look at two stories about the Middle East coming out of London today. From the Telegraph, parts of Middle East are at breaking point with power cuts and water supplies running out. Record temperatures have plunged parts of the Middle East into an energy crisis marked by 23-hour power cuts, failing health care systems, and fuel-related protests. Years of warnings have been ignored. Resource mismanagement, corruption, and climate change all combined with destabilizing economic crises have led to collapsing power grids and fuel shortages that are leaving businesses, hospitals, and citizens in despair. Food that people can already barely afford is spoiling in fridges. The lights have gone off in the airport and hospitals are rationing air conditioning. Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, we they go on with this, but there's the 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 same story is also being covered this morning by the Independent. It's kind of the the bigger picture of that first story. So I like the big picture of collapse on this channel. So we're going to turn over to the Independent and listen to a water crisis is creating nightmare conditions across the Middle East. <clears throat> that the wars of the future will be fought over water rather than oil is an adage that feels like an increasingly terrifyingly terrifying reality as every year goes by, especially across the Middle East and North Africa that are on the front lines of the world's climate crises. This year in particular, water has become a worryingly scarce resource as wars, crumbling infrastructure, and in some instances unprecedented economic collapses have led to rolling power outages that have become disastrous when coupled with record high temperatures. Guys, I just have to break in here. I have already, in the first two paragraphs, uncovered probably four grammatical mistakes, misspellings, whatnot, 
uh, we have a collapse of the mainstream media news. For instance, they call, I love this, instead of, outage, instead of power outages, power outrages. Yes, power outrages uh, have become common. I bet they have. Could you imagine the power outrage that I would be having? I lose my internet for 10 minutes and I go into a, uh, an internet outrage. I can only imagine. Uh, anyway, all this has sparked unrest. I love that word, unrest, in countries from Sudan to Iran and triggered cross-border conflicts. It will only get worse as the summer and the miseries drag on. And while the Independent has long sounded the alarm about this with extreme climate events appearing across the world, the issue is far more urgent. If people lose access to safe water, it will make halting the spread of the corona panic even harder. Yes, this is certainly the number one concern. Uh, you may, f let's go over to Lebanon. You may find it surprising that it is in Lebanon, perched on the Mediterranean that is uniquely desertless for this part of the world, and instead rich with mountains, forests, lakes, and streams that is the latest nation dealing with a water crisis. On Friday, the United Nations Children Fund, UNICEF, warned that Lebanon's water supply system is on the verge of complete collapse. In just a few weeks, four million people, including one million refugees, are at risk of losing access to safe water because water pumping will gradually be curtailed, you know, as the as the power runs out. How do you think they pump the water? You know, it's kind of like in my own house. When I lose my power, I lose my water because my pump goes out. I know exactly how they feel. If the public water supply system collapses, UNICEF estimates that water costs could skyrocket by 200% per month because families will be forced to find water from alternative or private water suppliers for many of Lebanon's vulnerable households. This cost will be too much to bear. Water will cost two and a half times the monthly average income which is staggering. Uh, imagine if your water bill was two and a half times the amount of your income. <clears throat> At the heart of the water crisis in Lebanon is a very man-made problem, the country's economic collapse, which according to the World Bank is the, among the world's worst collapses in the last 150 years. The economic collapse has bankrupted the state so much that swaths of the country no longer have power. Even those who afford to buy access to private generators have little power amid massive shortages in the diesel needed to power them. Piling further pressure on water systems is the lack of funding to fix crumbling infrastructure. A bit. But it's not just Lebanon whose water system is on the brink. Uh, again, guys, if, if I were a, a proofreader reading this sloppy story, I would be up to about a dozen just inexcusable typos uh, in this story. Anyway, that has nothing to do with the story otherwise than my remarking on the collapse of the most basic journalism skills on the mainstream media. <clears throat> but it's not just Lebanon whose water system is on the brink. In Iran this week, Amnesty International said they have verified footage proving eight protesters have been killed 
during a deadly crackdown against rallies over severe water shortages in the country. Uh, Iranian state media claim the total is lower at three and that unknown people are responsible, you know, for killing the protesters. You can, you can really uh, look forward to more protesters being gunned down in Iran. <clears throat> um, people had taken to the streets in dozens of towns due to the escalating drought, which environmentalists say the state has failed to handle as temperatures have pushed towards 50 degrees C. I think that's around 120 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not exactly sure what these protesters think the government is going to do about a drought. Uh, what's going on in Iraq? Across the border in Iraq, water shortages have also driven people to the streets, particularly in the south where the historic marshlands have been steadily drying out. Uh, water shortages have also <clears throat> set Iran and Iraq are frequently at odds over water issues. Iraq depends on the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. I think we all remember the fertile crescent from our uh, school days. Not so fertile anymore. Yes, uh, depends on two rivers for nearly all of its water. But Iran is now building dams to re-divert some of that water causing alarm and creating major water shortages for Iraq. Can you say water wars? Similar issues have blown up between Iraq and Turkey over rivers. In Syria, the UN also warned of severe drought because water levels in part due to the levels of the Euphrates are lowering. <clears throat> it is means that war-blighted Syria now ranks seventh on a global risk index of 191 countries most at risk of, quote, a humanitarian or natural disaster event that could overwhelm response capacity, close quote. And, uh, and anybody who thinks all of this is limited to some far-off country, I did like uh, this story from the week, which we're going to wrap up on. Rich countries are deluded about the climate threat. Well, if you lived at Bugs in a Jar Farm, you would not be deluded about the climate threat. I, just any day, my little house is going to go washing down the river. The recent flooding in Germany and Belgium was estimated to be the, be the worst in at least 500 years. Some 205 people have known to you know have been killed. A further 176 are still missing and unlikely to be found alive. And billions of dollars in property damage have been inflicted. In the ensuing news coverage, a note of astonishment could be heard. Quote, it is inconceivable that this is happening in Germany, a Red Cross driver told Reuters. Did you ever imagine something like this happening here in Germany? A CBS reporter asked a local resident. Resident, I don't think anyone could have imagined something like this, he replied. There are so many people dead, another resident told a reporter. You don't expect people to die in a flood in Germany. You expect that maybe in poor countries, but you don't expect it here, close quote. The shock on display is reflective of a widespread and deeply ingrained belief that climate change will not really, will not really affect rich countries. Residents of developed nations have long been accustomed to the most damaging natural disasters, largely striking 
impoverished nations, while wealthy nations may be hit by hurricanes, earthquakes, or floods, they have been largely protected by their superior building codes and well-funded emergency services. Oh yes, but this is not the case anymore. Poor countries will be hurt by climate disasters, but even the wealthiest, most technologically advanced countries are already getting hammered and it is going to get much worse in the future. The flood damage in Germany surprised scientists who have spent years and tons of money preparing for extreme flooding and even sent out an advance warning across the affected areas. Germans, quote, were stupidly congratulating ourselves that we were forecasting something so early, close quote. Hydrologist Hannah Cloak told Science. Uh, the problem apparently was that researchers previously focused primarily on larger rivers which had caused prior floods while this freak event struck tributaries that were thought to be less of a risk. The disaster in Germany was classic climate change caused by a bizarre slow-moving storm that dumped a stupendous amount of rain in a short time in a confined area. Uh, you know, that's exactly what the road crew guy visiting my place last week told me. He said that if my little valley were to get three inches of rain in one hour. He said, grab everything you get, jump in your truck, and haul ass to high ground that your house is totally, it, it is a goner if we get three inches of rain in an hour. But what is true for Germany is true for upstate New York. <clears throat> the changing Warming climate means there is no more normal. Previous weather patterns are less and less useful every year and disaster can and will strike when you least expect it. Even when you have spent years building up protective mechanisms such as my little Grand Coulee Dam I'm building in my backyard, yes, they can easily be overwhelmed by unprecedented freak events made more likely by global warming. And given that, global emissions have not decreased at all. This is only the beginning. Anyway, uh, this uh, goes on and on and then uh, they talk about the United States is the worst offender by far, of course, meaning being completely unprepared uh, for what's coming down here, that we are in complete denial. Uh, I love it, calling, <clears throat> calling the new infrastructure deal a cli basically a climate suicide pact. Yes, all of this is happening in a year in which Portland, Oregon boiled in temperatures never experienced by Atlanta or Dallas. Extreme drought grips nearly half the country. Another very severe wildfire season is choking the skies from Seattle to New York. Actually, I am in Portland, Maine on the Atlantic coast and we have this uh, wildfire smoke from Oregon and not Portland, Oregon today. Portland, Maine uh, has wildfire smoke from Oregon. I hear actually, you know, the wind is blowing this way. So Portland, Oregon probably has less smoke in the sky today than Portland, Maine. Yeah. Guys, this is how, how crazy it is. And the future drowning of Miami became 
the deadly present drowning of Miami, and we have not even hit August yet. So uh, that is the story uh, in the last week of July uh, 2021. How many of the 31 uh, undeniable prophecies of the apocalypse did the mainstream media just hit on <coughs> on a Monday morning in the summer of 2021? But uh, the little dog and I, we're going to head out and we're going to go take the little dog on a run on this absolutely glorious morning on the end time. And then we're going to take a ferry boat ride through the wildfire smoke of Portland, Maine. I suggest you get out there and take a ferry boat ride while you still can. Hopefully not in your living room. Bye, guys. All right, are you ready to go for a run in the park?